Beneath a shroud of perpetual storm, in the wild heart of the Southern Hemisphere, lies a stretch of ocean so formidable, so relentless, sailors for centuries have called it the Roaring Forties. Imagine a latitude where the wind never stops screaming, where the surface of the sea is rarely still, and where waves the height of office buildings roll unbroken for thousands of miles. This is the Nightmare Latitude, a place so hostile it defies the very notion of safe passage. Welcome to the planet's most dangerous ocean waters, a belt so ferocious that even in the age of satellites and supertankers, ships vanish without a trace. Stretching from 40 to 50 degrees south, the Roaring Forties encircle the globe, spanning the Southern Ocean, the South Pacific, the South Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean in an uninterrupted ring. There are no continents here, no mountains or forests to slow the breath of the wind. Only water, an unbroken belt, measuring more than 40,000 kilometers around the Earth and over a thousand kilometers wide. Here, the ocean is a highway for storms, a place where meteorological violence is not the exception, but the rule. The physics of danger in these latitudes is simple and terrifying. Westerly winds, powered by deep, low-pressure systems, race unobstructed around the globe. With no land to break their momentum, these winds gather strength, accelerating to speeds of 40 to 70 miles per hour, with gusts that often exceed 100 Maubi Yima, enough to flip a cargo ship like a child's toy. The fetch, the distance over which wind can build waves, is virtually unlimited. As a result, waves here routinely reach 30 to 50 feet, and rogue waves of 100 feet or more have been recorded. These are not rare events. They are woven into the fabric of the Roaring Forties, a permanent storm belt where the sea itself seems possessed. It's no wonder that throughout history, these waters have earned names like the Graveyard of Ships and the Storm Factory. During the Age of Sail, clipper captains seeking speed between Europe and Australia would brave these latitudes, risking everything for the promise of swift passage. Some made history with record times, Countless others simply vanished. The annals of maritime disaster are thick with the names of vessels lost. Wooden hulls splintered, steel ships ruptured, crews swallowed by the sea. Even today, the Roaring Forties remain a crucible for modern shipping. The story of the MV Salem, a modern cargo ship that disappeared in 2015 without a distress signal, is a chilling reminder. In these waters, technology is no guarantee of survival. The meteorology of the Roaring Forties is a masterclass in chaos. Low-pressure systems swirl and intensify with breathtaking speed, often developing into monster storms within hours. The Coriolis effect, the twisting force of Earth's rotation, spins these systems into cyclonic fury, creating wind gradients that can tear apart even the toughest vessels. The result is a sea state dominated by wave groups sets of massive swells followed by smaller, deceptive lulls. The period between crests can stretch to 20 seconds with waves traveling at 40 to 60 miles per hour. The breaking waves, foaming and white, sometimes extend for miles, creating a landscape of water in perpetual upheaval. Navigation here is an exercise in survival. Few safe harbors exist between the continents and weather routing requires continuous, sophisticated analysis. Satellite communications, so reliable elsewhere, can be disrupted by the violence of the storms. Rescue, in the event of disaster, is fraught with difficulty. The remoteness and hostility of the environment challenge even the most determined search and rescue efforts. Fuel consumption skyrockets as ships fight to maintain course against the relentless wind and waves. Equipment failure is common, as salt spray and pounding seas test every seal, every weld, every bolt. Modern shipping strategies are built around avoidance. During the Southern Hemisphere winter, when storm intensity peaks, commercial vessels often take longer, safer routes. For those compelled to cross, every measure is taken. Reinforced hulls, extra emergency beacons, enhanced life rafts, and rigorous crew training in heavy weather survival. Insurance premiums reflect the risk. Operating in these waters is not only dangerous, it is expensive. And yet some still seek out the Roaring Forties. Extreme yacht races like the Volvo Ocean Race deliberately traverse these latitudes, pushing human endurance and engineering to their absolute limits. 
scientific research vessels, bristling with sensors and ice-hardened hulls, venture south to study the climate systems that originate here. For beyond the roaring 40s lie the furious 50s and the screaming 60s, zones of even greater violence, where winds regularly exceed 100 mile bar and waves reach unimaginable heights. Here, near Antarctica, only the bravest or most well-equipped ships dare to go, navigating not only storms, but drifting icebergs and bitter cold. The impact of the Roaring Forties extends far beyond their latitude. These winds and currents drive vast ocean circulation systems, shaping weather patterns across the globe. Storms birthed here can influence rainfall in South America, Africa, and Australia. The isolation of Antarctica, its fortress of ice, depends in part on the ceaseless energy of these winds, which help maintain the continent's frozen shield. Climate change is altering the Roaring Forties, shifting storm tracks, changing the frequency and intensity of the tempests. As the planet warms, the behavior of these winds has become a topic of urgent research, for their influence touches every corner of the Earth. The environment here is unique. Albatrosses and petrels soar on the wind, their wings adapted to endless turbulence. Beneath the waves, marine life thrives in nutrient-rich upwellings, sustained by the mixing of deep and surface water. These are productive fishing grounds, though perilous to access. Migrating whales and other marine animals use the currents as highways, traversing vast distances in search of food and breeding grounds. But the currents also trap pollution. Plastic debris swirls in gyres, a grim reminder of humanity's reach. Technological advances continue to push back against the dangers of the Roaring Forties. Satellite weather forecasting provides unprecedented warning of approaching storms. Ship design has evolved with stronger steels, composite materials, and stabilization systems to tame the rolling sea. Automation and computer controls help crews respond to heavy weather. Yet, the ocean remains the ultimate arbiter of fate. The economic impact of the Roaring Forties is profound. Shipping costs rise as companies factor in risk and fuel. Trade routes shift with the seasons, and the energy sector eyes the furious wind and waves for their power potential. Tourism, adventure sailing, extreme expeditions offers a glimpse of this wilderness to those willing to risk its wrath. Research funding pours into weather monitoring and climate modeling, recognizing the critical role these latitudes play in Earth's future. In the end, survival in the Roaring Forties depends on preparation, skill, and respect for nature's power. Emergency protocols are specialized and rigorous. Life rafts must be deployed in 40-foot seas, and international cooperation is vital for rescue. Weather windows, brief calms, are seas for critical operations. Crew safety is paramount. Harnesses, safety lines, and protective gear are not optional, but life-saving. Communication with rescue coordination centers is constant. Survival training is intense, focusing on cold water immersion and the realities of extreme exposure. The Roaring Forties remain Earth's last true wilderness, a place where every crossing is a story of tension, danger, and discovery. Each storm, each wave, each ship that braves this latitude adds another layer to the mystery. What secrets still lie hidden in these furious waters? What truths remain impossible to imagine, waiting to be revealed beneath the screaming wind and the towering waves of the world's most dangerous ocean? The answers, perhaps, are as endless as the storms themselves.